Welcome to Traffic Talks. I'm Adam McCabe, content producer here at Traffic. Our topic for today is safer no matter what. How security technology companies will rise to meet the global changes created by the coronavirus crisis. Let's meet our panel. First, we have Rochelle Thompson, Senior Vice President of Global Marketing at Pelco. Good afternoon, Rochelle. Hi there, thanks for having me. Thank you, we appreciate you. And joining us as host for today's talk, we have Creative Director Jeremy Trout. Good afternoon, Jeremy. Hi, Adam. Hi, Rochelle. How are you today? I'm doing great, thank you. How about yourself? Great, thank you very much. Good. And our topic today is really talking about how coronavirus has disrupted a lot of industries. Yeah. And, um, you know, Pelco's role in serving those industries, how the coronavirus has affected Pelco. So, Let's start there. How, how has coronavirus impacted Pelco and how do you yeah. see it impacting the industries you serve? Uh, that's a great question. And, um, you know, it's, it's an interesting one too because um, we have a unique ability right now to serve a wide variety of industries, but with healthcare in particular, and what the pandemic has done is it's created this need to quickly set up these makeshift healthcare facilities, um, you know, and, and I think that we've seen that over the course of the last few months, yeah. hotels converting, conference centers. Um, in fact, here in Santa Clara County, they converted our, our convention center. Right. Um, so how do you get that quickly um, monitored on a system that's trusted and that's still uh, has some of these, uh, I mean, a lot of people don't understand, but there's a lot of uh, compliance regulations that you have to meet. And so, you know, Pelco is uniquely suited to help serve some of these solutions. And so we've definitely seen an uptick in, in those types of situations for sure. That's great. What about marketing? How have you seen marketing impacted? Is it easier or harder to get your message out there? You know, yeah. the, the hospitals and groups that you're talking about with those makeshift is that already current Pelco customers or are you getting new customers coming in because of this? You know, I think that there's um, a lot of our system integrators are working um, across uh, each of those scenarios that I just um, mentioned. Um, so, so that's definitely great. And we're, we're seeing new, we're definitely seeing that new business. Um, you know, to kind of answer your question as a whole, though, is marketing easier or harder right now because of COVID? And I, I think it's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you think about the fact that you now have a workforce online like never before, I mean, yeah. we have people that their job was never to be in front of a computer necessarily, but sure. yet that's what we're having to do. We're having to shift into this whole new way of doing our jobs. Um, so I think that as a marketer, um, it's a unique challenge because, you know, we, we pride ourselves on understanding the buyer's journey and when to serve the right message at the right time. Sure, yeah. And here we are with people online and it, tongue in cheek, it was kind of funny, um, but it said, I, I read this meme and it was like day 17 of, of stay in play or shelter in place, made it through Netflix, what's next? Yeah. And it's true, you're consuming so much content so quickly. And so as a marketer, we're having to pivot and make sure that we're creating more content. We're having to create content on new mediums that we might not have, have had before. So I think something like video like this, yeah. um, it's huge. Like, and it's, it's just being um, soaked up by, by people. And um, the timing is interesting too, right? If you think about your workday, my workday starts at about 5 a.m. and ends <laughs> at about 10, 11 at night, you know? Yeah. And in between there, I might be taking care of my child or making dinner, but you know, it's like it's Groundhog Day over and over. And I think we're yeah. seeing that. So, yeah. so I think there's definitely some paradigm shifts that as marketers, we're having to rise to the occasion. Content is king. So your ability to output content quickly and efficiently and get it served in front of those audiences. Um, I, I think if you are well positioned for that, it's easier. Yes. <laughs> if you're not, it's a little bit more challenging. So yeah, loaded answer to your question. But <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, I our digital team have been sharing, you know, just how much higher usage of social media, how much higher yeah. YouTube video watching is happening with every audience. So it's crazy. You know, a lot of opportunities to reach audiences there if yeah. you're prepared to do it and, and can move nimbly, right? Absolutely, 100%. Great. Um, so I think live events like conferences are an important part of Pelco's 
um, sales process usually. So with live yeah. events around the world being canceled or postponed, how are your customers seeking, seeking information and making decisions about security technology if they can't get their hands on it um, or they can't have you know, necessarily the same kind of like self-shopping experience they would have at a conference? Have you been impacted by that and how, how are customers coming to you? Absolutely. Um, and yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely, um, in fact, we just missed one of the biggest trade shows of the year, which is ISC West. And to your point, that's probably not just for us as a vendor, but um, our customers and prospects, they kind of save up for the whole year to go to that show. They have their yeah. checklist of solutions and vendors and demos they, they want to schedule. So um, our sales team has definitely um, been rising to the occasion and finding creative ways to give demonstrations. Um, the nice thing about our video management solution is that we do have a demo that is interactive, that we have some uh, video feeds of you know our cameras in action. So they've been able to really take advantage of the different platforms um, from Zoom to Teams to Skype, um, yeah. you know, we've used them all and continue yeah. to do so. Um, we also have a learning management system. Um, so uh, a, a PLC is what we call it, our Pelco Learning Center. Yeah. And so uh, there we have a lot of courses. And so we've definitely seen an uptick in people just interested in like what we, what our courses are about, how to uh, be more proficient with our products. Mm. Um, so we're definitely trying to output more course material as well as um, just general webinars, you know, uh, giving them information. In fact, we launched a series of snack sized webinars with your help, um, traffic, and they've been wildly successful just because people are so hungry for bite-sized information. Yeah. And really what that webinar series was meant to do was it was meant to be your booth walk-up demo. So if yeah. you would have come up to us at ISC West, that's exactly what we would have walked you through. So, so that's what we're trying to do is create more of these experiences where we can still give you, you know, what we would do at these events, um, just in a, in a manner in which you can sit in your basketball shorts or <laughs> yoga pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of the things I think has worked well with uh, webinars for Pelco's audiences and other audiences is there's a little bit of schedule and a little bit of structure to it. So yeah. it's not, it, it, it's a nice compliment to just the random Googling that people would do or, you know, capturing somebody through as a lead through social media or something. It allows people to say, okay, I'm gonna think about my security needs at two o'clock on Tuesday and you know, get a little bit prepared and look forward to it and then have time to make a decision. I think that, that helps alleviate some of that issue of um, events being canceled, right? Absolutely, 100%, for sure. Okay. What are you hearing directly from your customers? How has coronavirus pandemic changed their goals and needs? You mentioned um, some in the healthcare space. So obviously mm -hmm. they have a lot of new needs um, yeah. and, and fast moving uh, needs. Um, what else are you hearing from them or from other customers? Absolutely. Um, you know, I think the, the the number one thing we've seen is that even given the pandemic, you know, projects might be delayed, but they're not canceled um, because you know, if you think about your physical security infrastructure, you can't cancel safety. <laughs> um, it's it's definitely something that's paramount to an organization's, you know, objectives, um, keep people safe. So I think that, um, you know, we've seen in some industries an acceleration and others, you know, maybe taper down, but places like airports, you know, there's some unique new challenges that they're having to overcome. And so, yeah. you know, as a trusted vendor and partner to these um, different industries, we are trying to also come up with solutions. You know, we we pride ourselves on having an open platform, which allows us to integrate with different third party solutions that might give us a more holistic approach. So, um, you know, we're definitely starting to see more of that. Nothing I can talk about yet, but there's some great cool features mm -hmm. coming soon. Um, but all with that um, in mind is that, you know, there's been a paradigm shift in the world and we have to continue creating solutions that meet the needs, even in this type of a situation. And so, you know, that's really what we're focused on. I might be asking you, uh, I might be pushing at that boundary a little bit, but uh, we're wondering how you do see Pelco products contributing as the world is reopening in this world where, yeah. um, I know even in, um, you know, some parts of Asia, like enhanced surveillance, um, you know, different tracking needs, like following vectors of, you know, carriers and things like that. How does, what does Pelco offer in that space? 
You know, we, we don't really have an active solution with regards to any of the, the tracing um, and the tracking that's going on. I mean, we have other tracking solutions more related to vehicles and uh, people um, just in general, but not related specifically to this, not to say that there couldn't be, um, but it's definitely something that is, is worth exploring as an additional, um, you know, feature to um, be able to offer in the future. And with those integrations that you said are a core part of your business, I'm sure that, you know, your solutions work together with the solutions offered by companies that are offering it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, um, you know, there's, there's a, physical security is such a vast um, array of solutions that serve different needs. You have access control, you have, um, you know, there's a lot of location services now with, um, you know, monitoring where people are. There's like badges that with sensors. I mean, all of those things kind of uh, culminate into your physical infrastructure. And so we can play in that area. And so our goal is to kind of be this united platform that can help tie these things together. But really our core is our video management solutions and how we tie any related to the cameras and what they can capture and how they capture it to make you as efficient as possible. What about thermal imaging? I know that yeah. some of your solutions do offer that. Have you had customers asking about that being part of their post-COVID solution? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, the thermal is a very interesting topic and it's, it's a specialized um, camera. Um, that, that there's actually two veins to thermal. So you have uh, thermal imaging, which can just detect whether there's, you know, a figure uh, versus, you know, land mass. And then there's actually these other solutions that can detect temperature. So um, that is not a solution that we offer. And um, we have decided not to engage in that path. Um, it, again, it's a very unique skill set. And there's a lot of, um, actually, I don't think there's a lot of vendors, but there's several vendors out there that do it really well. Mm. Um, you know, so from, from our approach, um, you know, we're going to continue focusing on the solutions we do have, you know, I think that just, you know, as an aside, um, one of the things we did get hit with a lot of requests on the, on the thermal. So absolutely. They see thermal and they're like, Oh, you can detect body temperature. Like if yeah. I have a fever. Yeah. So, so no, we can't. Um, but also I think that, you know, it's, it's an interesting solution. If you really think about it, you know, if you do have this camera in place, they're very expensive. Um, but what's your protocol? And so I think, again, as we look to how the world is shifting. So if, these organizations are going to have these cameras. What happens if you do have a body temperature? You know, are they going to dispatch security on you? Yeah. You're already you're already shedding the virus, so it's already a little bit too late with that. So, I think it's just interesting to understand. You know, yes, you can have this type of solution, but what are the protocols with it? And I think that's what we need to keep having that conversation. But Pelco, as a vendor providing that, will not be playing specifically in that space. But we'll continue with our thermal imaging for, you know, tough lighting, um, a lot of perimeter detection. So that's really where our thermal cameras play. Gotcha. Great. Do you feel like there's any permanent changes on the horizon? So, you know, we talked about some of those things like temporary structures and things like that. Do you think do you see or do you foresee the way Pelco offers solutions or the way some of the industries you serve operating changing, you know, long term? Or do you think things will go back to the way that they were? I think they have to change. And, um, you know, the reason I say that is not, not necessarily from, um, you know, a, a customer perspective, but just from an organization and protecting your people, you know, and obviously look at what we're having to do as organizations now. It's like, you, you know, Pelco, um, we, we have a whole bunch of measures that we're, we're putting in place to make sure our people are safe, first and foremost, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. we're providing masks, we have tons of stations for self regulating and washing your hands and, you know, where to stand in the bathrooms. I mean, we're thinking about everything and anything um, with just that sole purpose to keep people safe. And now if you think about that from you know, a bigger perspective um, and, and not just keeping your people safe, but your building safe. Um, think about the last few months, these buildings have been sitting basically empty, like no one there to really, um, you know, make sure all the doors are locked and make sure all these things. So it's, it's mission critical to have protocols in place that can 
act as your additional eyes and ears to ensure your building is secure, to ensure your premises are secure. And so I think that just, um, you know, God forbid we have another pandemic, but I think it's worth understanding, you know, what the organization needs to do to not just keep your people safe, but, you know, your, your people, places, and things, you know, so it's like, what do we need to do moving forward to ensure that happens? And I imagine those solutions will look different for different industries and different companies. Absolutely. And they're having conversations with you about what they need, what they're thinking they'll need. Um, Absolutely. As you said, there may be some exciting new things coming in the future that help answer some of those questions as well. Absolutely, 100%. Great. Um, how are you keeping staff aligned and informed with your brand messaging? So that would be, I would ask that in, in two ways. One, just with your marketing team yeah. and agency partners like Traffic. And then two, just Pelco overall. How are you keeping, you know, pe Pelco employees who are dispersed or in new situations they've never been in before aligned with what's going on with Pelco, what story to tell? Um, how are you yeah. keeping that story aligned, that marketing story and brand story? Absolutely. No, that's a great question. And, um, you know, thank God for modern technology. <laughs> um, honestly, um, one of the things that I've loved about Pelco since the first day I joined here is as a, an ELT, as an executive leadership team, transparency is paramount. And, and just this this need to communicate what is happening with the organization. And so I joined, um, you know, a few months after Kurt had joined, Kurt Takahashi had joined as a CEO and, and they'd already started these um, monthly town hall meetings. And so once a month, we come together with the entire organization. They used to be in person in Fresno and then we'd hold um, a virtual one at night. But now obviously it's, it's 100% virtual, but you know, our, our main goal is to just ensure that our, our people feel engaged with Pelco. I mean, our, our blood, our blood bleeds blue. Yeah. <laughs> it, it truly does. I mean, there's such a rich history. We have six decades of experience and there, there are some people that have been there for quite a while and it's just, it's the people are so important to us. And so um, we've made it a goal to make sure we communicate. So we have that monthly meeting where it's an all hands. We have a weekly update that goes out with key stakeholders um, giving us information. We have, um, I, I mentioned Teams earlier, that's our, our chat tool um, that we have chosen. And we have like a, a team, uh, a general teams that we communicate on. And so we're, we're trying to hit people from all these avenues. We're empowering middle, like manager to share down to their teams and so there's really this sense of, of an open door policy um, with my team in particular you know it, it's constant I mean I, I think I'm I communicate via chat the most but it's important to engage like this um, we do virtual happy hours we yeah. you know it's like I'm trying to to do things to you know stay engaged and, and stay physically present virtually <laughs> but it's so important because a lot of people like um you know when you go into a work environment that's a really important part of your day and, and a lot of us are missing that right now so i think it's really important to find ways to stay engaged and to make sure that you're taking care of each other because once you do that the brand starts internally and so when you have that cohesive unit um and your you know open lines of communication that is your best brand evangel and evangelism, excuse my, my messing up that word, but it's true. Um, yeah. You know, your people are your best way to get, if they're proud of the company, they're going to go see, you know, what, what the company does and just it oozes. And, and that's, that's what I feel from Pelco. And it, um, I'm proud to be a part of this team for sure. That's great. I, I would totally agree with everything you said, but one thing that definitely struck me is, I think we, it's becoming more clear during this um, pandemic of how much of a, the internal brand culture of a company happens in those in-between moments or those yeah. non-project communications. Um, yeah. You know, how uh, leaders, you know, communicate about even, you know, just day-to-day -day communications. And I know um, I've found with my team here at Traffic, the importance of us having time to talk about things that's not a project status update mm -hmm. or not a, um, you know, a, a specific 
just having, you know, we'll, we'll have a team update and we'll just stay on an extra five minutes to see how everybody's doing. Um, and mm -hmm. that's such a key part. That actually is part of your brand, right? Um, that's Absolutely. A of, you know, aligning. And, and I, I think it's great that you're looking for ways to do that for sure. Yeah, absolutely. It, it supports the more focused brand messaging work that you're doing, right? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And, you know, I think that kind of dovetails into the next part of like what you had asked, you know, working with vendors like traffic, you know, um, you know, you guys are, are helping embody what we're feeling and what we're developing and, you know, bringing that to life in ways, um, you know, that, that we just haven't had the ability to before. And it's just such an exciting time. So yeah, while there's a lot of uncertainty, um, there is a lot to be excited about. So that's kind Absolutely. of where in this traffic talk series, that's kind of where we're, where we're ending these conversations is there definitely is a lot of uncertainty in the world. Um, what are you looking forward to? What are you excited about for Pelco and for your, your customers? And as a marketer, uh, looking forward, looking forward to the next three months, six months, next year, what are you excited about? Yeah, well, now that my website's live, <laughs> I'm sure you've heard stories. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I think that, it, um, again, it's such a unique time in history. And I mean, first and foremost, as, as just a mom and, you know, just a, a human being on this planet, you know, yeah. I, I really am, am enjoying the time with my family, first and foremost. So, you know, and I think that um, I try to instill that upon my team. And, and what that does is, again, kind of going back to the brand and just building it up. It's like, we're people first. And mm -hmm. our, our vision is to make the world a safer place. And I think that we're taking the right steps. We're doing the right things. Um, you know, as an organization, we just continue to find ways to serve not just, you know, our team members, but our partners and our customers in new ways, you know, it's like we have, we have to get more creative with how we communicate and, you know, we can't necessarily send a tech on site. So how do we serve, you know, some of those, those needs. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm excited to see how we continue to innovate as an organization and, you know, from a marketing perspective, just continuing to build upon this foundation that we've started, um, and just really see where that takes us. And, you know, um, it's, it's hard to say I'm excited. I'm, I'm hopeful that we will have, you know, some, some answers soon and the ability to kind of get back to a new normal. So, so I'm excited for, for that. Um, and um, I just really appreciate you guys taking the time to let me be on this podcast. So thank yeah, you. If anything we marketers love, it's a challenge, right? We love rising. So up. true. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Rochelle, for talking with yeah. us. Um, it's been really great to get a view into what you're seeing for Poco and your, your customers during this time. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're sure. We'll chat soon. <laughs> for sure. That's all for today's traffic talks. Um, if you have any questions for our panel, would like to work together, you can find us online at wearetraffic.com. Thank you so much. Take care.